everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Humankind Let's Play as we pick things up from turn 100. So, we're actually running through the medieval era really fast. I think we're going to hit our 7 stars and actually move on right away for once. Uh, the reason being, there is not much for us to really stay behind for. Like, maybe we can get 2 more stars here. They still have this display issue where on load it doesn't show you the actual score. But essentially we get around 100 some odd points for both of these and then um, you know we could get up to 200 odd points for the next one but I don't think it's worth waiting for it especially since we can just move on the only restriction I feel like the game is giving you in terms of staying is if you didn't finish building your emblematic districts and since we spam these out right off the bat um, it shouldn't be a problem for us and we can move on into the early modern era all right before we do that though of course we have to keep building we haven't really focused on religion that much. There are these really cool hamlet uh, district that are just basically a good for worker type of situation. I don't really need it, um, but we should probably build more districts, mainly because we have the bonus of um, getting our builder affinity, which means anytime we complete a district, we get plus 10 stability only when we are builder focused. And when we move on to the next one, I don't think we'll be builder focus. I mean, there's a chance we could be builder focus, but maybe not. All right, we do have enemy scout units within our borders. I think we have military access, so it's not like I have to chase them out or be angry at them, but I'm still worried. Yeah, maybe we can do something about it. Hmm. I could build more units, but I feel like units are basically kind of an arms race. This is a sacrifice of food. That is the most spots. And the reason why that's the most spots is actually it's going to get rid of some food and pick up just lots of tiles, which is not really what I'm aiming for. I mean, the, the forest bonus, like the woods are going to get one extra production in most cases. No. Do we not have lumber, Jack? I think we do. That is kind of weird. Or maybe it's already reflected in the mount that's shown on the map. That's probably why. Yeah, I think we just finished this cliff right here. And over here is actually mostly a farmer town. The adjacencies are definitely stacking up. Now this river, this slot's kind of nice because it's right next to the capital district so it's still retaining the two production which i'm kind of fond of so i don't know where we actually i mean this one's telling me to build it here for 21 with only one adjacency as well that is actually kind of surprising how that is the most what if we go makers hmm. not a lot of good slots for it 27, 28 would be the best one here. Uh, we are a little weak because we only have two territories here. So maybe we will build that actually. Yeah, we focused on infrastructure already. This place actually has three harbors as well. We're not going hard on naval, but there's a good reason for that. There's not a lot of water on this map. Twenty-five and nineteen. This big ambitious project is not complete yet. See, that's like thirty, twenty-eight. Is thirty not the highest? It's not being high. Ooh, thirty-one. Okay. Guess we got a winner there. The Defiant Canvas. With cultural venues flourishing across the empire, a famous painter has been criticizing your rule obliquely through their work. Based in cosmopolitan city of Feng Hao, their latest piece depicts a glutinous, saggy flesh giant snacking on a platter of sugared cake, cakes, and they are gaining much public attention. What is your response? We can prohibit it. A blanket ban on political artwork leading to bad consequences, or we can encourage it by seemingly pleased. Hmm. 
It's not going to shift the society much. But, you know, the, cur <laughs> the curious cat insight may want to see what the bad consequence is. And it's also chance, so there's a chance we don't see it. Yeah. Let's actually go for things with continuation just to get to see more of these events on this run. So, no more bad art of me. You're banned. Political art, you know, are all banned. And let's continue. We got our agrarian star. We need three more turn. Oh, oh wow, we actually picked up an extra. I was not expecting influence to actually pick up anything else, but I was not looking at the value, I guess. But this one's so easy to get, I think we should get it. And plus, technology is another aspect of each era that we could pretty much consider before moving on. Uh, but the next one, we have the Dutch, which is a faction that I actually used in our open dev session. Um, their stock wisdom is one extra money per all population. Not bad. Uh, the VOC, which is basically the East India Company for uh, the Netherlands. Um, it's a good building. I don't know if they changed it. Plus 20 money per Jason Harbor. Plus one money. Plus two money per trader. I think it's a little bit different from when we used it. I think it was a little bit stronger. I think it got nerfed as well. Uh, things that got abused during open dev definitely got changed up. We also got the unique ship. I think we're going to pass up on the Dutch. It's, this is not a money run, even though we are trading pretty heavily. Uh, the Howden Osani. This would be a Native American tribe. Food on exploitations. Okay. So any type of food exploitation, or any type of exploitation that we have will get one food. I guess it's not limited to food exploitations. But that, that would be strong, actually, but I don't know. Plus five food per number of territories, three sister plantation. Okay, this is the food variant of the maker's district that we had back when we had the Mayans. So huge burst of food if we want it that way. But I don't think food is a super essential resource because it's not going to give you anything except for population. That's really the only thing you get. So I'm not so, you know, in love with that one. Any tile that produces science gets three more science. The Joseon uh, dynasty for Korea. And we have the Sum 1, which I believe is their school. We get plus two science, plus three science per adjacent research quarter. So this is the synergy there. Plus one science per research, plus one research counts as a research station. We've got the famous turtle ship. Uh, defensive unit has ramming, increased mobility, has bonus combat strength, get the adjacent units. No special rules for gun platform. No special rules. I, I don't know what that means, actually. Um, but science is always a good choice, I think. Science and production are all really good. Um, we just don't have a lot of science producing buildings, in a sense, but this is something we could consider. Ming, the Ming Dynasty. We got another influence-based, and we have minus 25% cost of enacting civics and changing the civics, canceling them, plus one influence on territories, and grant tea house, plus one influence per district in the city, in the territory, they need to, yeah, what, what does this mean? Oh, no, 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 this just means every district we build gets plus one point of influence, but still, per territory or per city? Because that's a big difference. If it's per territory, then let's say I have a five territory city, I build five grand tea houses, do I now get five points of influence per district? Because that would be insane. I guess we could find out. Uh, plus two influence per adjacent district. Okay, that maxes out at six adjacencies. So, you know, potentially 12 points extra here. But the plus one influence per district is the draw here, of course. Um, stability. I mean, Chinese unique emblematic with stability. We have the rocket cart. Um, I think a lot of games recently have been trying to feature this unit as... China's unique unit. I think Age, uh, Age of Empire 4 is going to have the E Wolfung or like the B uh, nest, uh, which is basically the rocket's cart. You 
swarm of bees, like swarm of fireworks into the enemy. It's a heavy weapon range combat unit, can only move or attack in a turn, cannot retaliate against close range combat, suppression, suppression the target unit cannot move next turn. As, wow, that is actually good. If we just overwhelm them with firepower, we just lock all of them down. It needs three uh, pewter, gunpire, uh, gun, gunpowder. I don't know what the resource is called in the game, actually. Haven't got to play early modern era that much. Uh, in the last open dev, I think our game ended before I really got to play it. We, we were the Dutch for a little bit. And we have the Mukal and going back to India. This would be a builder focus. Looking at Impura Mac. Uh, Nificance, two percent industry per number of territories in your sphere of influence on capital. Okay, so this would be like how many territories we have attached to our capital. We have like five, so that'd be ten percent extra industry faction wide. Perhaps it's not very clear. Uh, three extra industry per worker three industry period, three per adjacent maker's quarter. Yeah, kind of good. Not as good as the one we had with Mayans. Ottoman Empire, expansionist, minus 50% on heavy weapon industry cost, plus three combat string on heavy weapons. Yet their unique unit is not a heavy weapon. It's a Janissaries. Um, Siege Master, bonus strength in participating in an assault or a sortie. We have the Sultan... Kami, plus faith, plus influence, plus influence per adjacent district. Mm. Okay. Poles, military faction, plus 10 district fortification on district, plus 2 stability on districts. Oh, that's kind of like what Joe had. I wonder if there's enough of these that you can kind of like counteract all the district minus 10. Like you get 5 of these sort of plus two bonuses, the alt district has no stability issues, but I doubt that that can be achieved. Uh, but whenever they have stuff like that, they can stack. Always have to kind of wonder. Plus two influence. I guess this is the kind of like a castle. Okay. Winged Hussars, charge master when charging the target cannot retaliate. That is broken. Are they trying to hint at the Battle of Vienna there? Anyways, we the Spanish honor and glory in non-allied territory fighting overseas. Cathedral, uh, Gothic Cathedral. Let's just translate it in English. We got faith per population. Just, just faith. Conquistadors. El Dorado, generating additional money from winning battles and ransacking. Uh, search for golden glory. The Indo-Japanese, uh, the Shogun's Authority, this is another influence-based one, plus one influence per population on city or outpost, that's pretty straightforward. And plus two, oh, we have the Terra, uh, Shrines and Pagoda Quarters. Okay, plus two influence, plus ten stability, plus five influence per adjacent mountain. So this is kind of competing with the slots that we placed all our Confucius Academy, because, you know, we can't give those slots up again. The, uh, Nagi, uh, the Naginata, which is the weapon they're using, the uh, polearm blade, uh, Samurai, Anti-Cavalry Honor Code, prevents his army from retreating. Oh, we just have to stand and fight. Interesting. Okay. It's also kind of funny that he's holding this weapon in the back. It's kind of transparent. We see the Conquistador's musket pointing out. Anyways, Venetians, again, another money sieve. Uh, yeah, money culture. Uh, plus silver tongue, plus one money per number of trade routes, plus two per naval trade routes. I mean, it's good. Uh, I think the more factions in a game, probably the better these are, given that you have potential for more trade routes. In our case, we have three other factions we could potentially trade with, and if the relationship sours between any of us, that could become a problem and quite a useless one. Influence per adjacent money quarter. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go Ming here um I know someone asked me if I was gonna go and I was like I don't have to go with the Chinese culture just because they're Chinese I want to see the bonuses are any good and the real part of this that we want to find out is whether grantee health stack or not right plus one influence per district 
is this district per city or district per territory? Like how much stacking can we do? If it's per territory, then this means whatever district we have, it's just one extra influence, that's it. If it's per city, then depending on how many territories we have in this city, we could stack this multiple times and it could get really insane in that case. And Rocket Cart looks promising. Uh, we just need to get that resource though. Oh, we have, where's our headdress? We're going to be an emperor. Look at those dragons. Yeah, your dress code changes with your uh, culture, of course. Let's confirm. How do you do, whoever it... you are? I know you won't do it again. Are you kidding? Just stop. All right, we bought everything from you. How you doing, friend? Saffron is for food. Plus six food on farmer quarter. Per saffron or just having saffron? That's another big question. I bid you greetings in the name of my proud people. Ah, we'll buy the new one. Okay. So we can't become the Ming until the next turn. So we still have to build whatever we have right now. Fort combat strength for unit Jason. Yeah, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get all the garrison update uh, upgrades for our capital, mainly because we have built quite a few uh, garrisons as well. And we're gonna actually upgrade the wall and provide a tourney field for cheaper land units, or I think cheaper units or cheaper land unit units, just any units. And we'll still slap down a. a district because while well, we can only build one district we have enough production to build all these things together 400 plus 900 thousand 355 plus another 955 955 yeah a few of these just basically can be completed together we might as well keep doing this um so i need to choke up this point well, actually no we said we want to leave the river for the enemy to stand on and here there's a path from here to here and yeah, we need to choke up this point, probably a little more conservatively here. This is a capital. These are all snow, so they're all pretty bad. Um, yeah, we'll put units in these places eventually. We are going to have stability problems. Well, that's why we have Akrodok. And we can still put another district down. I think. That one is really big. It's a big number there. I'm not convinced I want to build it there. Because I'll end up losing some food as well. Which is not being shown because it's not tiles I have. That's basically potential tiles. Hmm. I think honestly... The hamlets play better here because we save the 18 food that otherwise would just disappear on us. We just basically don't waste these rivers. Yeah, let's build a hamlet here. Uh, Feng Hao, you are doing fine in terms of stability. We finished the ring here, so I don't have to touch anything here anymore. Food is very healthy. A lot of things I want to build here. Like, we're at a point where I don't think we need any more food. Let's build a wall. Let's make unit production a big thing here. Let's get some vision. And maybe we put a couple garrison down as well, because it's not very friendly here. What do we think about the potential converting this? Because we can grab this, and our defensive line really just shifts to the north. Hmm. 
not sure. We can rescue back some production here because of the neighboring farm that kind of took it away. All right, let's just try out these Hamlet. I think they're quite nice because you can basically transition from one type of district to another without harming the nearby production sources. Um, 30, yeah, that seems like a winner here. And time to change. Geography, cartography, algebra, optics, astronomy. This is Zhenghe, actually, from it's the Ming Dynasty. It's a time of discovery and exploration. But discoveries are not made solely by traders and adventurers. Those who explore with ships and caravans would go in circles without those who explore with pens and parchment. Will the world remember Ming China for its caravans carrying brilliant ceramics? Or for its hunger for the territory those caravans traversed? See, that's a misconception. When Zheng He went down in the South China Sea over all the way to Africa, it was not interest in land. They brought so many ceramic and goods and they just wanted to like gift it away and be like showing off Ming is rich, Ming is powerful. You know, it, it was a big waste of money for sure and they eventually stopped it. But the technology, like the fleets were like nothing. Like this is before, you know, Columbus and them went to Americas on like three flimsy little ship. Zheng He's fleet numbered like hundreds. He had supply ships, he had ships where pigs were being raised. And then you have all these ships carrying all those ceramic china and all those pieces to give away. Uh, it's kind of crazy actually, think about it. Um, trade has been disrupted, that's nothing we can do about it. Do they feel Our better? Empires are close. <laughs> I am so pleased to greet you. Uh, he, he's just so... That's a translation. <laughs> Our empires are close. We're an era behind. I'm so scared of you. Um, we double everyone's score. Sounds kind of good. All right. Time to test out this grand tea house. We need to cluster this with a lot of districts because we get adjacency to, uh, bonus there. And... That shouldn't be a hard thing, given that we can kind of see what our districts look like. It doesn't... what does it exploit? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. So we don't want to stick it to any of our adjacent things, because it's going to produce only culture. Um, those are artisan quarters as well, but we don't want to hug a mountain, because that takes away one potential adjacency. What is that feature right there? Games slash domestic animal. So that, that's like a special tile. Uh, produces nothing, you say. Absolutely nothing. Finding a spot for this type of place is not easy. Don't want to waste the river tile. Like this tile is screaming to me a little bit. Sure, those production go away right now because they're not being exploited, but we can build something on top of them and then they will go back to being exploited and then they will recover. But that means I have to build on this tile and I already used my hamlet here. This is the hamlet district. Kind of cool looking. I have a road grid. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know where to put it. I, I, I can build more Hamlet in different territories. Oh, this is frustrating. I, I do want to build it for sure. I guess we just have to make some sacrifices here. And then we have to find a district to put here, which is going to be troublesome, because then we're going to have to make the decision between makers and food. But we can just specialize, I guess. Uh, less of a problem here, honestly, because there's just nothing here. Um, all the tiles are bad, therefore we don't care. I'll probably put it here. This will go away from any slight adjacency issues we might have with this, because we're kind of wasting a maker's quarter adjacency here if we don't do that there. Yeah, no regrets here. I think this is fine. Ooh, ooh. Ah, saltpeter. Okay. Uh, 
Could we? Wait, isn't there a exploitation building for this? Oh, we don't have the technology for that yet. All right, anyways, we're going to slap this down. 30 points. See, that feels like... Feels like it's per district in the entire city. Because adjacency, like, we're only getting... All right, let me do the math real quick. We're only getting two points if I place this down here, right? Because we only have one adjacency right now. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we only get one adjacency when we place it down. We get two by default based on emblematic district. That's from another trait we picked up. And then the rest are all the districts in this city. Okay, I think that's correct. All right, we need to find a slot for this guy away from our rivers. Oh. This is fine. This is a weird slot because we got rid of it and it never really recovered after we got rid of it. Like, what if I farm here? Okay, then the food will come back. I might actually have to farm there. It, it displays exploitation, right? I, I think I see there's six and four, similar to this. It's just not being shown on the map, which is really frustrating me. Mm. Okay, it's there. So do, do I lose those when I place this down? I think, I think that's how it works. But I don't want to hear, I want to hear. Okay. We just end turn. We can go back to culture blitzing it, but I think culture wise, we're encroaching everyone else right now. <laughs> Look at this. Look at our culture in enemy territory. Um, we have a lot of points. Can we buy a wonder? How, how much? 5,250. Okay, we can grab these four before they even get to this era, and they could all be ours, like how we built two here. The English are also doing very well. They have three total wonders. We have one, two, three, four, three, five, five. And we're going to get more. All right, let's continue for now. Knowledge. Okay, buying our horses. We also have a lot of civic that we could pick that we've been holding on, but I don't think we need any of these. I could also take a look at the tech tree later, but let's go back to building cities, which is my favorite part of these games. Oh, once we put walls, it's going to wall off our districts. Nice. Okay, so this might be where I put it. I lose three food. And since these are pure food tiles anyways, I can just put farms on them and we don't end up losing anything. Forty-four. Is there a tile better than forty-four, are you telling me? It should be highlighted. Forty-six. What a winner. In the snow as well. Oh, the snow has no adjacency. Wait, 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 wait. We can put this like here. A grand tea house serving all our army barracks. And we can army barrack the rest of this and be all adjacency plus no loss of any resources. I like this idea. It's, I mean, it has more potential than this down the line because it's just has currently more adjacencies. Nice. Um, snow are useful for putting grand tea house. I mean, it's very scenic, you know, go to a snow, you're cold, you want to drink some tea. Our army will thank us. I right, build one here. The recommending edge of the map because, because of currently a lot of adjacencies, but that's definitely not smart. This one has no production right now because I think it's a industry exploitation, but there's a farming quarter right here. That's kind of messing it up. There's another farmer quarter right here. So I don't think I can save this unless I go maker here, which doesn't make sense. 
So I guess, I guess a tea, grand tea house makes the most sense here. Those are placeholders anyways, but I think this will work just fine. Yeah, we pretty much just spam our emblematic right when we get off. Uh, what's the recommendation? 45 right here on the cliff next to the capital. Now that's going to be a maker's quarter for sure. Stay away from rivers. Those are really nice. But that's all we really have. This is a nice maker zone, so we don't want to mess with that. This is what I'm kind of looking at right here. That seems really good. Like, we will lose some value here, but I think we can rescue those value with this, because it'll save both of these tiles, essentially. And then this one's going to end up being a maker anyways. We'll lose those six food, but we'll keep these food right here. We'll put this down first and then put the Grand Tea House right here. Alright, we can finally take a look at some of the tech tree here. So we're stuck in Medieval. We're not close to finishing it. There's one, two, three, four, five. Our science hasn't been growing very fast. We're kind of stagnant. We're not slow, but we're not fast. So I'm just going to pick up Theology for now. City cap, we'll take that and take a look at some of the ones we have access to in early modern. I think we looked at most of these already. Researchers provide stability. Wow. 10% uh, science. So that, that'd that be a really good science one. Cost of acquiring a base cost of trade resources. Increased money we get from trading to other. Minus 10 pollution. Forest. Oh, planting a forest. Pollution might become an issue later down the line, especially since we have so many Maker Quarter, but we'll see how we deal with that. A stealth unit. Wow. Armory. High Furnace. Adjacency for Maker Quarter again. All right, let's take a look at some of the early modern. Three Masted Ships Colony Plan. So once again, we get all the infrastructure in new cities in case we're going to a new continent. Draftees becoming our combatant at home. 34 strength. Quite powerful. Halibut unit. Taxation office for more money from main plaza. And luxury resources. Gunpowder. Saltpeter. Our rocket cart. Okay. We can actually research this pretty soon. Okay, we'll think about that. I see vehicle. Money from outposts. Uh, I mean, we have one outpost right now. Financial district upgrade. Stock exchange. Money and science focus now. Supply line. More city cap. Thoroughfare. Road for outposts. Increase movement costs of terrain. All, oh, these road changes all terrain type to one. Grain silos. Food for farmer plus farmer slot, similar to the granary before. Got ourselves mortars for sieging, money from spoils of war. Luxury manufactory. Must be placed on luxury resource deposit, can only be built once in the world. The related luxury from the chosen deposit will be named after its city and will bring even greater benefits. Oh. Are there any resources that we can think of today that's named after the place it's founded? I'm sure there are. Nothing's coming to my head right now, though. But that's that's an interesting idea. We get plus 50 fame on this. This is patronage. We also get that special wondrous effect, I believe. That's what this means. Even greater benefit for that resource. Playhouse for influence. We got the inventors for science percent science for per salt pewter. Universities, printage, printing house. A lot of science focused tech here. Um, plus one city cap again. Manufactory. And just uh, pretty standard stuff. 
A trade fair straight for money. This is a this is a project. Man o' war. Musketeers, bastions for extra fortification. Okay. Um sounds good. We kind of have a general idea of what's going on. Uh first we must drink tea. Our next recommended slot is over here at 47. I don't think they stack first uh Oh no, they're stacking. They're stacking. No, 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 these are emblematic. These are emblematic. What about other district? Are they showing? No, they're not going to show anything because they're going to give over their one to them. Okay, so currently when we built... Where's our tea house? We built one here, right? That's giving us 43. My question is, does that kind of like double when I place down the next one? Right, that's what we need to know. That location is not good because that's going to be a maker's quarter. Even though it's on farmland, it's going to be a maker's quarter. Just because we want more adjacency for these guys. Um, but then... I guess we could do this. These are probably going to end up being... Money quarters? Right here, these three. Actually, no, it could probably be these four. We can put a harbor here. But this is probably a good place for it. Let's see when this finishes. Does that one go higher than uh, 43? Oh, okay, I know what the math is. The math is like this. They look at your tea house district, which absolutely they put a, they put a pawn here for the troops to, <laughs> I mean, it's part of the art. Look at them. So, I mean, we're kind of in the cold. What are these? Oh, we got enemy troops in our land. Well, there's a hot spring nearby. This could be a vacation place in the future. Um, what they do is they just count how many districts you have in the entire city. Okay, so they do stack, essentially, but you won't see it as a multiplier effect. You just see them putting up big numbers at each of the tea houses, and when you sum it up, it is a stacking effect where, you know, you have five territories, you add up all the district within your five territories, multiply them by how many tea houses you have in the territory, and you get a huge surge of influence based off of that. So it's still very, very nice. Um, did we finish building? We did. So this is our tea house here at 34 points, 42 points. The difference would be adjacency that they have, pretty much. 36, that's not a good place, unfortunately. At least not my definition of a good place. Mm. That's a lot of good rivers. I'm actually thinking here. Or even here. And just let these district count because they will actually count. This is only food right here, right? And that's because of the farmer quarter. But that's already happened. I still have a hamlet, but I built oh, I built them over there, right? So I mean, given that there's not much food in this one, I guess going food here is not a terrible thing. We lose production on these. Farmer, farmer. That one's kind of wasted, unless I can find something for this. I could also never build a district here, or just build a maker here afterward and synergize. It's still weird, because this one has a little bit of everything too. It's like, ideally, I don't even want to touch these two. Oh no, but this one's going to be maker for sure to get that bonus. So transitioning from this. It's nice if this never gets changed, but I don't think that's going to be happening. Yeah, that is simply not going to be happening. Well, we might as well build this one and then build the T here. Alrighty. That feels like a pretty good choice, actually. Three adjacencies are ready. Four adjacencies are ready. That we can probably build something adjacent to mountains. Actually, no. Only one of the mountains. Actually, none of the mountains are our city, so <laughs> none of that adjacency would even work. 
Uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one, but we can at least get four, maybe five. It's only wasting two food. It's it's not a huge cost. If we move it beyond, like this could be good maker territory here next to the mountain tile as well. This is not really worth it. Wait, wait. And, and plus the mountain's gonna take away a tile. Unless we do it here. Like this will probably become maker, 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 maker or food. Uh, I don't know actually. Yeah, I feel like it's too much setup for this. I feel like this this will do just fine. There's not that many district here because it's only a two territory city. Therefore, it's not really a great boost. I did look at this and I think we voted no. We decided that it was better to put it here after building that hamlet to protect these water tiles from losing production. Yes, I think this is the good choice here. The barre is protecting this tile and this is protecting that tile. We'll end up with less adjacency because I probably only will build two more districts, three more districts here and not build a district on that and not build a district on that. That will do. All right, let's take a look at these early modern era. Finally, stop fighting each other and hating me for it on both sides because I'm friends with both. Therefore, you're friends with none. Uh, the top copy palace um, plus twenty stability here on city and outpost. Useful. Hundred percent production towards any shared project. That is incredibly strong. Plus five. Wait, why is the wording so weird? Because there's an indention here and there's a reverse indention here. Plus 20 stability, period. On cities or outposts, plus 100% production towards any shared project, plus 5% industry. I think only the city it's in, right? I think that's what it means. And then plus 100 faith. Taj Mahal, money based on a calm city. So a city that has good stability, plus fame. Must be placed on a river. Okay. Are there any restrictions on here? No. Machu Picchu. One, all of your other cities gain food equal to 50% of the food produced on Machu Picchu city. Must be built on... Wow. Wow. Food share. This could be incredible. Like, Feng Hao, right? Despite being only two territories, probably has our biggest food production because of the, the mighty river system here right outside of Feng Hao. And if I could have a mountain in Feng Hao, uh, technically I do have it. I can slap it over here. Does it have any exploitations? Yes, it does exploit all tiles, so we can actually keep production of everything around it too. Uh, anyways, look at the next one. St. Basil's Cathedral. Faith. Faith. I'm ready, not interested. Okay. So, Machu Picchu for food and population growth. I think this is the one we want, though. Because this will set us up nicely for everything else afterwards. So we want to first identify which one of our cities make the most production or industry. 100, 1,249. Sorry, not 100. We're way past that. But this is a sad place. Close second in Loyi. Does Loyi have potential to push it farther? I think so. Because there's still a bunch of places I haven't placed down makers. So it's a close second. Alright, so I guess the question is just who can gain more land better? Right? If they can, say, build this and grab a bunch of really useful tiles, then that's kind of what we want to do. Just like how we grab so many tiles. They have so many wonders here in Loyi. Forbidden City, Mausoleum, Angler Walk. <laughs> What's another one going to hurt, right? We can put it here. We grab all these tiles here. We can start building money quarters around our 
harbors. Maybe next to a natural wonder. I'm kind of convinced. Yeah, I'm kind of convinced with that. So this is like vacation hotspot here. Come here to see four natural wonders all within this little small quadrant. Yes, we built that here. Okay. Now we still have big projects to finish. Everyone needs to drink some tea. And if we look at it, yeah, it's, it only increased by one because we technically built one more district. And that's really the only gain here. Um, which is fine. I think this is also fine. Because I know where I want to build stuff. I can build a hamlet there, farm, farm, and then here, maker. And then adjacency here. And everyone's happy. T next to the capital. Oh, uh, I think we expanded down to build this here. That was the purpose here. Yes. And you. Let's look at your shape. Your shape is interesting, to say the least. Um, no, that's one less adjacency we could have otherwise gotten. That's not actually going to eat the yield. We can build one hamlet around. See, there's like, uh, what is that? That's the hamlet. Where to build it? Oh dear. Okay, then then we go here. Because then we don't waste any tiles. If these tiles have defined role. What did you do this time? Once again, our faith. I know Come on. You won't do it again. I mean, <sighs> wow. Our faith is spreading. Twenty-three followers in this city here. We probably need to end up building more holy sites. I think we're getting away with it because a lot of our wonders also count as holy site. So we're actually getting it counted for us. Otherwise, it wouldn't be counting and we could be getting into trouble. Um, hmm. This could work. This could work just because I could build a hamlet here to preserve the the production. And this one, you know, we can dedicate it to something special. That's just food, that's just food. Yeah, that works. Alright, they're done with all their tea houses. Three tea houses built. We can move on to the next era. No. I mean, technically, yes, but not right now. Um, Hamlets are still incredibly good. But I don't know if we should use them right away. I think we just join the project. Get our palace finish. Talkapi Palace. They're also done. Stability is not an issue. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Why can't we build a second hamlet here? Oh, because that's from that region. I could have saved that. I could have saved that. Okay. Three turns. Now it's only one turn due to some rounding. I want guilds. Let's get this. Cog. The great fish market for naval trade out and money on harbor. Only Loy Yi will benefit from that, really. See, the bad thing of attaching so many territories to our capital is our capital have to build so many emblematic districts every time because they're lucked out with so many. Okay, ideally we want to push this like all the way over here so we can get at least one, two, three, four district adjacencies just because we have so many mountains here that there's just not a lot of adjacency space. So I want to go all the way here 
for example. But what would we build along the way? Like technically around the mountains, Maker, but Maker doesn't really make a lot of sense here. Uh, doesn't fit, basically. I'll claim the mountains, though, so we'll, we'll make those Makers. We should have finished our natural wonder, shouldn't we? Your empire. My God, stop oppressing my people. Topkapi has been built, rebuilt, and renamed any number of times. It is a testament to stamina and survivability. Okay, so we should be boosting their production by 5%. I think we are. It doesn't really say here, but and if we work on any project, it's only a one turn holy site here. But we rather get the one turn tea house. Um, where? Uh, I thought we picked out a place. I thought we picked out a place. Uh, we lose a bit of things. More than a bit, actually. Wait. Why can't I build over here? Just because district haven't really reached there yet? Yet I can build the hamlet anywhere I want because of the wonders creating the tiles already. But, but the tea house can't do that? That's very interesting. Like, I'm not... I'm kind of avoiding that place just because I think we get 28 here. So that's worth it. Grand tea house. Tea house on tea house. Probably not wise. Uh. Yeah, we can't save both of these, right? It's impossible to save both of these. So since we got to wreck something, let's just do tea house on tea house. That's not a bad idea. And I know that's going to be maker, maker. That we can do like a hamlet or something. And then here we can do like a maker or something like that. Okay. First off, can you guys upgrade? Jan Chua, which we have never used, are going to become knights. Heavy cavalry, hard hitting. They jump from 29 power to 36. Receive combat bonus if attacking non-adjacent enemies. Unable to climb fortification. That's fine. Now, skip that city. I think it's time to get them a stone wall. They have a palace right now, I think. Could give them more adjacency here. Just the huge influence boost. If we want that. Yeah. We'll build some food, prepare for Machu Picchu. Not ready yet. Gotta build one more of these and then build it here. Recommending here, which makes sense. We recover a lot of tiles by building this here, and we get the adjacency for that. We lose the food there, but we can get it back by putting a farm. And maybe let's put the farm here first, that way we don't even lose that. Or, oh, we already used it. Is there any dual resources here that we could use, say, right here? Actually, why don't we complete the adjacencies for this? It's 
28. Uh oh, we have a food issue in our outpost that we have not attached. I mean, I don't know if I want to attach you to this city. I could always liberate them down the line. I could also make them a city right now, which also doesn't seem, it just doesn't look nice. Like this is, I mean, they can starve and lose people. They're going to bounce between the two. They'll increase one, not enough food to eat, decrease one and so forth. Just be more of a notification issue. Oh, this land is bad. I'm going to put it here just to send a message in the future that we will claim this. A tea house. Where did I want to place it? I don't remember. I think here? Yes, I think here. Makes sense to me. Last one, because now we have connected it. Hmm. Food is fine. So we do industry. Those two are both 28s. Down here. I mean, there's no reason to get a 25. We can get a 28, right? So let's finish those. More religious oppression. Tell me about yourself. Yep. I can see the bigger picture. We're the, you know, whatever religious leader. We don't care about our men. All right, let's build a wall and we can probably build a district at the same time. It only costs 400 for the wall. We're producing, you know, extra. So we can also slap the district at the same turn. And I want to get more adjacencies for that one. So we're going to do that. Ah, we're done building our emblematic. Let's move on to the next next era. Um, hmm. There's a lot of these that we didn't get to finish, and we probably should finish those. 28 again. Just completing our Mayan Kuna. I think that's how you would say it. Wonderful building. That's the game-changing building for us in this in this run here. Um, yeah, still super confused how we're approaching this here. I wanted to rescue this resource here, so I think this is what we build here. Ah, uh, the Defiant Canvas 2, we got it. The ban on political artwork has backfired. Word has slowly crossed the empire, and citizens have taken to the streets and public squares where the protests, uh, where the protests sometimes turn violent. It appears they are rather fond of their right to criticize you. We have minus 10 industry in all our cities for 10 turns. All right, given our current state, it's not going to hurt us, but obviously not a great outcome. But it's nice to get this outcome. Want to see these things. A new event, a blossoming of beliefs. Ooh, religious feeling is strong across the empire, but that is not preventing discord from emerging from among the faithful. Great cities are finding themselves under the sway of diverse religious leaders who each see the standard creed with different eyes. New religious orders are emerging every year and their influence is growing. What should you do with these groups? So are they trying to represent? I mean, we're technically what? We're, we're in the early modern era at 563 B BCE because we've been going pretty fast, but I think maybe they're trying to represent like the split within uh, the Catholic Church around this period. Um, dissolve, fanatic on city for faith, not something I'm interested in. Influence, tolerant on four cities. Or lead, as world leader of the faith, it's our duty to strengthen and keep it pure. So it's all faith-based, it's just changing of the swings here. Back to traditional by a little bit, one tile. 
more to world to towards the world. So basically increase food but lose five points of stability everywhere. And this is more towards order and authority away from liberty. I'm going to practice tolerance because we don't even care about our own religion. So why should we care about other faith coming in? Population, population, population. And let's take a look at our star situation as I think we're going to wrap up the episode. We are way ahead in points and everyone's still in the era before us. So the five stars and three stars, they're from the medieval era. We're in the early modern with two stars already. Uh, one in, or both in Builder. We're going to get five more district pretty easily, pick up 300 points. We'll be the first one to get these, so there will be 100, 200, 300 flat for us. No competition. I don't think we can get three, although we have the naval technology to move into the waters, so we could potentially snatch up some land there and attach it to our current cities. That is one strategy. I believe population will definitely get another star at least, if not two more. So I can expect all three Builder and probably two Agrarian. That leaves us with two more stars to grab. We'll definitely try to get at least one of our Influence Star, given that we are building all these tea houses for that purpose. And it feels like it's a long way away. But a thousand points when you're gaining a thousand points a turn. <laughs> Wait, we can grab another Wonder, can't we? Oh no, it, it, it increases. But these four might be all ours, for all we know. Um, yeah, you know, 10,000 points away, right? It's 10 turns away. It's not a big deal. Uh, we'll get the we'll get at least one star here, and I'm sure technology is going to get at least three more pretty easily. So we'll get enough and go to the next one pretty fast because we're done with the emblematic build, which is the only thing that's going to make Ming worthwhile to keep, right? We get all the bonuses except for the tea house when we move to the next one. So once we build all this, advance, advance, advance. And uh, yeah, that's going to be our goal. I think we're going to fly away with this victory here. And uh, we'll definitely wrap this Let's Play up, learn from it, start a new one, play in a different style, perhaps more aggressive, perhaps water map, try some of the naval and harbor builds that we didn't really get to try in Pangea. So we'll try to spice things up, but we'll continue with this one next time as we move forth from the early modern era. So until then, bye.